<clears throat> now, I know what you're thinking. And you're not wrong. That's a lot of coke. That's a lot of coke. And there's potentially even more. And there's potentially even more. And uh, part of me feels like uh, Anakin. What have I done? And part of me feels uh, like it's freaking awesome. And I'm excited and I want to get all of them. Uh, yeah. Comics and cosmetics over on Twitter. Hang on. It's going to scroll past here. Uh, I, I bought one case. Just one. Because we just wanted some. Hmm. 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 Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you don't know what's going on, you don't know what the deal is. Uh, Coca-Cola did a promotion with Marvel. All right. And uh, this is a lot like the old Pepsi one that they did for uh, the prequels. Okay. And uh, in the in the Pepsi one, like those collections of cans and stuff, they're really cool. People still really want them. Nowadays, they're very hard to find. Um, and so I don't know how rare these ones will be. I will say this. I will say this. Uh, we went out yesterday all over town. All over town. We stopped at one place initially, and they had it. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Like, that's really cool. Um, Then we went around because I was like, okay, well, let's hit some other spots. Dude, we found one other case. And we went to, like, five locations. One other case. So then we ended up going back to the first place. Well, I guess I just went back, dropped the family off. I went back to the, the original place where we were at. And I got even more. And you should have seen these people looking at me, dude. Like, they were all just like... What the fuck is... Uh, what, the, what the... What the what uh, is going on with him? So, we're going to... Uh, we're going to crack open a bunch of these things. Here's what's going to happen, okay? Here's what's going to happen. We're going to go over the news first. There's some stuff I want to go over. And then uh, we'll start cracking these things. 
And I think there's 38 of them in total. Let me show you. I'll, briefly, I'll show you uh, what we're looking for here, okay? So let's count Let's count this up. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Is that this? Hang on. 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's 15 here. And then we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wait, what? Where are these? What the fuck? I don't understand. Why are some of them? What is happening here? Are there like hidden ones or something? What is happening here? Hang on. Let me just count the ones that are actually here. I'm already confused. This is already a nightmare. This is already a nightmare stream. I regret it. I'm shutting off the stream. I'm taking... What was I thinking? <sighs> okay, let me think here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But then, the, dude, Coke. Coca-Cola Company. L listen, let's have a talk. Just real quick. Let's have a little talk here. What the shit is this, man? I can't even get a... I'm supposed to be trying to figure out which ones are here. This is so fucking confusing. Oh, my God. How many is it? How many? And why is it not like obvious on the, oh my God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And we're on that Ant-Man. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, I think it's 16. 16 and 15. What's that? 31? I think that's it. And I want the whole set. I want the whole set. And I'm going to be honest with you. There's a couple of different ways this could go very badly. Um, There was a guy that was hitting me up. And some of you were saying this in the Discord. And I really can't tell if you guys are trolling or if you're being serious. And a lot of you guys were saying all the ones you got are all going to be the same character. Okay? And there was a dude saying yesterday. He was like, dude, yeah, you literally just got all daredevils and i was like there's no fucking way that these are all daredevils if these are all daredevils i am going to lose my goddamn mind i'm going to become the hulk live and i'm going to freak out so that cannot be true and i think you guys were just trolling me on that okay but um the other thing is yeah it's one character Per case. Per case. So, just to sort of show you what I mean. Um, so, and this is, this, is what's, this is what's crazy, okay? So, y'all were saying that shit about uh, Daredevil, right? And I was like, there's no fucking way. And then I opened up a case last night just to see. When we also wanted a Coke, we had this, like, room our living room was like full of coke and we we're like yeah i kind of want a coke now like and so we 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 cracked one to open and of course it's daredevil and uh Probably just a funny coincidence, you know? Probably just, you know, the universe being hilarious. Why did it have to be Daredevil, though? Why did it have to be Daredevil? Like, I, I was, any other any other character, any other character, I would have been like, ha-ha, see, they're not all Daredevil. So anyway, we're gonna we're, yeah we're gonna get into that. We're gonna have some fun with that. 
and again, I want the full case. Now, here's here's the thing. If it if we're not um as long as they're not all daredevil, <laughs> right? <laughs> as long as they're not all daredevil, if I don't get the full thing, I'm going back for more. I might even leave the stream on and I'm going to fucking go to the store. You guys will wait. I'll come back with more. Is this the the potentially the dumbest way to spend money? Maybe. It is am I am I am I probably just letting the collector part of me go crazy and give the Coca-Cola Corporation way too much fucking money? Maybe. That's yet to be determined. Okay? We don't know yet. We don't know. Okay? All I do know is I want the full set. So we're going to get into that, but that's going to be a little bit later. We're going to save that. I do have some news that I want to go over. There's some uh, updates and some stuff that I want to talk about with you guys, too. First of all, how's your weekend? How you guys doing? I had a great weekend, man. I think I'm going to need to get more Coke Zero either way, because I don't think I got enough Coke Zero, to be honest with you. I might not have gotten. All right, real talk, real talk. I was supposed to go back this morning because I can only fit so much in my car. Okay? And I was supposed to go back this morning. And I didn't because of the Daredevil thing. Just just, just relax. Uh, just relax. Let me go over a couple of these things. Uh, Jacob Stowe says, does Josh know the 12 packs only have one character in them? Yeah, yeah. Each each one only has one character. And it's got like 12 copies of, of each character. Yeah. Uh, Rossi says to help you pay for your Coke problem. Hey, thanks, man, but also $2 is not going to do it. Thanks, though. Uh, Life Break says, here's $2 to your first Coke Zero case. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. Uh, the Minds Behind with the 10 spot says, here's a 10 spot to chip away at your Coke debt. Uh, hopefully, this uh, that offsets your wife's eventual anger over this waste of funds. A waste of fun? Wait, what? This is not a waste Cause we're gonna get the full set. Cause then we're gonna we're gonna get the full set, baby. You know what I mean? Uh, Rogue Strider, welcome to the Nerd Avengers. Cold Dog, welcome to the Nerd Avengers. Welcome back, guys. Rossi, what's up again with the one? I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm pre I'm triggered already. Um, yeah, how was the weekend, dude? How about the UFC? I know we don't have a ton of uh, UFC fans in here. Some of you guys get bored when I talk about the UFC, but uh, what a what a UFC man! Incredible. I had my uh, my cousin came into town. UFC so boring, Jesus. Um, it was it was a dope night of fights, man. And then probably experienced one of the coolest moments in the history of the UFC. With the uh, Max Holloway knockout with one second left. Oh, my God. Whew. And then Alex did what he did. Yeah, Alex did what he did. You know, I I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I missed the Alex knockout live. Okay. So, my, like I said, my cousin was in town. We went out uh, for lunch. We had a couple drinks at lunch. We uh, hit the mall a little bit. Uh, and then we came back and then we were, uh, drinking, you know, starting at, at six when the fight started. And so it was like six plus hours of drinking and maybe a little bit of smoking and watching the fights. And, uh, after the Justin Gaethje fight, I was like, I don't know. Like I was still in shock and I was just, it felt like I would, I was drained like, a. A crash of some kind, right? Uh, and then the Wei Li fight, and me and my buddy were like, bro, like, or my cousin and I, we were like, we're getting really fucking tired. We've been drinking all goddamn day. So hopefully this fight goes quickly, right? And then right at the end of the first round, she had her in a choke, and it looked like she might. I mean, she was fucking out, dude. She literally. <laughs> Wei Li won by TKO, by submission. And by decision in the same fight. That's unbelievable. That's never happened before. Uh, so we thought maybe it would end in the first round. And we were like, yes. 
And then dead ass, we both woke up after the Alex knockout. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much how I thought it would be. And then we like stumbled off to bed. But it was still a really good night. Uh, most of my picks were correct. Real shame about Charler, uh, Charles Oliveira. I think he had that at the end too. I think the homie was out on that too. Something they need to look at maybe. Um, but yeah, what an incredible night of fights, dude. So many good fights. The only really bad one uh, was uh, Aljo's fight. And they didn't even give him a uh, post-fight interview, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had a good time. I hope you guys had a good time this weekend too. Uh, let's see here. Jacob Stowe says, follow up. Does Josh know the boxes are not mystery? Dude, don't say that to me. Don't say that to me. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. They are not. Th Dude. You don't say that. Okay. Moving along. Carl says, here is for your Daredevil Coke sets. God damn it, chat. Uh, thanks, though. Lou with the 99 cents. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, Chris says, have a Coke and a smile. Hey, there you go. There you go, baby. Uh, Chillin says, remember how I was getting ready for an interview during the Prime stream yesterday? I got the job. Let's go, baby. Uh, Nerd Vengeance for Life. Take my money. You know what I'm Hey, that's awesome, man. Good for you, brother. That's awesome. Did you take my advice in the interview? Uh, Headless Ned Stark, welcome back to the Nerd Avengers. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Mr. Lucky, just want to say, keep up the amazing streams, Josh. Much, much love. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Elisa says, uh, let me set the record straight. The collector's delusion in me is strong. I won't stop until we got them all. Oh, hell yeah. That's my wife. Let's go. Matei says, so I sent Josh money for almost three years straight, and this is what he spends it on? Coke? And not even the fun kind? Smack my head for real, for real. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey, hey. Uh, why? How about this? How about this, Mate? Let's just wait until the end of the stream, and you tell me if you think you got your money's worth. Let's just wait. Let's see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of it. So let's just let's just wait and see what happens. Uh Nuck and Futz sent a member chat with no uh with no message. So can't do much with that. But thank you. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. Uh check the box and see what characters you're going to get, dude. There's no way. There's no way they're not random, dude. Why would they make them not random? That would be the dumbest shit ever. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Dude. <laughs> Dude, don't don't even. Don't even chat. Don't even go there. Don't even go there. Oh, guys. Ah, okay. Um, all right. Okay, a couple of things I want to say for the show notes. Went to GameStop yesterday, too. I want to show you guys a couple of things. Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Check this out. Um, oh, man, look at this shit, dude. Psylocke and Wolverine. Little double pack there. Whoo! Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I know. I know. Don't act like you're not impressed. Okay. Uh... What? Patch? Patch and Grey Hulk? Let's fucking go, dude. You kidding me? Joe, fix it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I got some more action figures. They're not dolls. They're not dolls. And I got a $200 GameStop gift card. Which is going to go... To one of you lucky members. But here's the deal. We're going to draw for that on Friday. Because I want to give uh, enough time for people to become a member in order to win it. And also so I can make back some of the fucking money on this goddamn coke. This is a really stupid idea. Okay. So 
You can become a member here on the YouTubes. You can do it for $5 a month. You can do it for $10 a month and get access to the Prime Streams, which, by the way, we had an incredible Prime Stream yesterday. Thank you guys for being there. We also had an incredible Diamond Lounge on Friday. We were this close to me needing to delete it. Luckily, we didn't have to delete it. I don't know. Maybe if I watch it again, I would delete it because it got pretty fucking crazy. But uh, it was still a really good stream, so I appreciate you guys being there. Uh, and so, yeah, you can become a member here, but guess what? You can become a member over on the Twitch. Yeah, that's right. We have a Twitch. We're streaming on Twitch right now. The, the, the Geek Supreme is over there right now. I think, uh, the Nerd Executive is over there right now. And shout out to the Twitch. Wake and Bakey Sama is over on Twitch. Uh, friggin' Ninja Rangers over on Twitch. What's up over there on Twitch? Nervous Armies over on Twitch. Here's the point. You can become a member on Twitch basically for free. You can take some of Jeff Bezos' money and give it to Josh so that he can spend it responsibly. Um, and you can do that if you have Amazon Prime, which, I mean, come on, everybody has Amazon Prime. In fact, everybody's got Amazon Prime, right? Does anybody not have Amazon Prime? Well, what's going on with my music, Chet? What the fuck, man? What is that? Page not available? Something went wrong? Oh, wonderful. Incredible. Amazing. <laughs> of course, of course, something went wrong again on that page. <laughs> what do we need music for anyway? What the fuck, Spotify? What is happening? No! I just want to do my goddamn musics. Okay, there we go. Whew. Okay, cool. I digress. Uh, you can become a member over on Twitch basically for free if you have Amazon Prime. And this is something that's kind of crazy. If you want not one, but two chances to win this $200 GameStop gift card. Uh, <clears throat> you can uh, become a member on YouTube and on Twitch. So, so do that. Fucking... Fucking do it. And uh, do it by Friday. I have to stop looking at chat. You guys are driving me crazy. Uh, do it Do it by Friday. That's when we're doing this. We're drawing for the gift card, so you have a chance to do it. So you should uh, be a member on YouTube and on Twitch, so you have two shots at it. Uh, are you sponsored now? What does that mean? I don't think so. I'm not. What am I sponsored by? Start gifting cans of Coke. Here's a... Oh, by Coke. Sure. Yeah, right. Uh, no, because here's the thing, too. Depending on how this goes, I will be sending a clip or a strongly worded email to the Coca-Cola company. It could, be, it could be a good email, right? Like, hey, good job, guys. That was really fun. I had this great experience. Or it could be like, what is this? You scammed me. Fuck you, Coca-Cola. So, because of that reason, we, we're not sponsored. We're not sure how this is going to go, to be honest. So, here's a question. What's up with shipping liquid in the United States? I didn't say shitting liquid. I said shipping liquid. Because don't they always, they always ask you when you go to the uh, post office, is there anything in here that's... Uh, fragile liquid or potentially hazardous and I always say no but this in this case I would have to say yes well how does that work can you ship liquid in this country what is uh America can somebody help me out here how, what do I what's what's the deal with that hmm? what's the deal uh cosmic and cosmetics hey welcome welcome as a nerd venger you're a nerd venger now talon welcome you are a nerd venger uh let's see here knuck and Fud says let's see that sick ass dk shirt any idea what comics are worth getting into these days loving ultimate spider-man also where can i get this shirt uh i think i got this at um gamestop i'm pretty sure Yeah, it's not bad. By the way, I moved shit around in here a little bit. 
So we can actually be like we're we're streamers now. We just stream. Some YouTube? No, sort of, kind of, no. So now I can do like karate's. All kinds of stuff. <clears throat> anyway. Can you fit all your cans? Uh, uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, Hunter Larson says, since joining the Nerd Avengers, my business has doubled in contracts for real. Also, I like Pedro Farid. But I don't have comic knowledge. Hey, that's okay. And also, that's awesome. I'm glad that your uh, your business is taking off. I mean, you know, becoming a nerd vendor is huh, it'll it'll pretty much skyrocket any potential endeavor that you have. Um, results may vary, <clears throat> but um, you know, makes you thinner in certain places, bigger in certain places. Um, money tends to show up in your life. You know, all these uh, results may vary. You know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Ferner87 says, what's up, sir? What's up, man? Uh, cool Bear 101 says, can Nerd Primes get two entries since we pay more? No. And one, because, I mean, you pay more because you get the, the streams. That's the whole That's the whole thing there. Uh, and also, like, that would just be very difficult. There's a a way to do this where I can just kind of get all the members into a Google Sheet. I just figured this out the other day. Um, So, yeah, no, that would complicate that. And uh, so I'm going to say no. Become a Nerd Venger last week and I'm up to 80 push-ups straight. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, I enjoyed last night's stream, so I'm good. Oh, yeah. Was it night for you? Because for me, I think it was it was 1230 in the afternoon, but that's interesting. Where are you at? What if somebody subs on YouTube and Twitch? Does that mean two chances? Yes. Yes. That does mean two chances. Uh, Josh, put on your Daredevil sh DD shirt live. Wait, what? What Daredevil shirt? What are you talking about? Uh, Josh, can we get in? Enter module bull transport lease cartons of Coke. Just let me know before you do this and I can buy stock in Coca-Cola companies. I don't know what that means, but yes. How many characters are there in the Coke cans? I think there's like 30 something. A Daredevil hat. It's a Daredevil hat. Yeah. Oh, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, this hat. This hat's sick, dude. This hat's real cool, but... For now, we're going to kind of let it chill. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else I wanted to say today? Is, it, is there anything else I wanted to say before we get started? Mm, I can't really think of anything. Is there anything you guys want to know about? And also, oh, I really like these Marvel Legends, but maybe I could give one of them away. I don't know. We'll talk about it later. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if you are a Unity backer, there's uh, the survey is going to be going out tomorrow if you're on the second chance. I just sent out a bunch of messages to the collectors, the new collectors on Kickstarter. So if you're a collector, you have a link to join the collector Discord. It's on your Kickstarter account. It's in your messages over on Kickstarter. So uh, check that out. And then Thursday night, we're going to be doing a town hall meeting. And I'm hoping, and, I'm, and I think I'll be able to, I'm going to try to show you guys uh, some cool ninjas. So check that out. That's going to be good. Uh, you should be totally hyped for Unity. It's dope AF. Yeah, and I really appreciate the review. I watched the review, and I thought it was really uh, cool. I was like, dang, that's, very, uh, that's a very kind review. And uh, you, you really got into the characters and what's going on with them. And I was like, oh, that's cool. She gets it, you know? So that's awesome. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Yeah, we're waiting on the coat. 
We're waiting on the coke. There's a couple of things I want to go over first, okay? Um, yeah. Better read that Kickstarter email carefully, Josh. I don't know what that means, bro. What do you mean by that? I don't know what you mean by that. Okay. You know what we're going to start with? Do you know what we're going to start with today? Anybody have any guesses? Anybody have any guesses? Open the Coke. We're waiting on the Coke. I said we're waiting. We're building anticipation. Uh, D Murdoch says, UFC 300, baby. Uh, this card almost made me as much money as Mad Max Holloway. Damn, nice. Good for you. Uh, fucking wild card, man. We got to spend a light hour talking about UFC 300. It was great, yo. It was great. Okay. Do you know where we're going to start? Anybody got any guesses? Also, like, there's like no, like, there's like no news. Fortnite, we just, actually, you know what? We can start just a little bit on Fortnite. I'm not going to go too far into this, but uh, Star Wars and Fortnite teaming up again. Looks like it'll launch uh, May 3rd, right before May 4th, for, you know, May the 4th. And I will definitely be streaming some Star Wars Fortnite. I used to always say that in the past, but like now, like we pretty much just stream. So I will definitely do that. Maybe we'll do it on all of our platforms. Maybe we'll do just some just on Twitch. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'll figure it out. Uh, Fallout. I do want to talk about Fallout. 100% I want to talk about Fallout. Okay. But that's not where we're going to start. <laughs> uh, Disney Star Wars. Uh, yeah, what about it? What about it? Did I miss something? Anyone who actually plays uh, Fortnite hates these Star Wars collabs. Annoying as hell. I don't, that's not true at all. I know a ton of people, including streamers, that uh, play Fortnite that really like the Star Wars shit. For me, Star Wars Fortnite is the most fun I've had playing anything Star Wars in, in a while. I don't even like the Jedi games that much. But Star Wars Fortnite? It's dope. Getting the Force powers, finding the sabers. It's awesome, man. Fighting against Vader? Like, that shit's cool. That shit's cool, man. The Fortnite collabs are great. Uh, so we get in the tower in Fortnite yet? No. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I'll be honest with you. Maybe someday down the line, but uh, not anytime soon. And now we get Outlaws. Yeah. The whole Outlaws thing. I mean, we can watch. There's a... Uh, so I'm sure many of you guys know Asmongold, right? Um, Asmin has been making some comments about the Star Wars game, and a lot of people have been giving him a lot of shit for it. And we can watch his latest response video and kind of break down that whole situation because I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, I said on Twitter that game is probably going to flop, and uh, I think there's a number of reasons why, and I think. Lucasfilm will just say that the fans are sexist. So that's that's how that's going to go. And we can talk about that if you want to. But where I want to start actually is with some Warhammer. Yeah, I tricked you. I tricked you. Wait, what the hell? <clears throat> Where are we at here? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. Oh, man. Here we go. So does anybody know what's going on? Anybody know what's going on here? There's probably some of you that know what's up, huh? And the ironic thing is this is my army. It's all happening because it's all my army. So this is like real fucking crazy. So the word out there, ladies and gentlemen, is that Warhammer has gone woke. That's right. All of the the wokeness and destruction of everything manly man that you love 
It's happening. It's happening to to Warhammer. Oh my God! And uh, what am I talking about? I'm talking about female adeptus custodians. And also, why is this fucking guy? Can you guys hear this fucking guy outside? Why does this guy have to be doing whatever the fuck he's doing with the chainsaw out there when I'm trying to talk about some serious shit? That's crazy. The the music stop. Yeah, because this is serious. No girls allowed. He man woman hater club. Kind of shit. Uh. So let's talk about it. What's going on? Okay. <sighs> so I was actually explaining some of this recently. You see, in Warhammer, you get uh, codexes. And a codex is a book that comes out with new rules for your army. Okay. Um, It also comes out with new lore. Now, one of the unique things about Warhammer is that its lore is all over the place. Some of it happens in White Dwarf Magazine. Some of it happens in these codexes. Some of it happens in short stories. But it's all canon. It's all canon lore. And so that's, I think, one of the reasons that uh, lore channels, when it comes to Warhammer, are... Uh, so successful and people really like them is because it really is difficult to go figure out the lore, to go find the lore, right? And so whenever there's a new codex, some people that are really, really into the lore, they will get the codex even if they don't play the army because they're trying to learn about this new lore. I'm going to go get a chainsaw myself, and if this dude's like up on some tree, I'm going to cut underneath him. And I'm going to Looney Tune this motherfucker and send his ass down to the ground because I cannot believe this dude is out here ruining my bit about the female custodians. Okay, anyway, just stick with me. Stick with me on this. We're talking about female custodian. God, I can't fucking believe it. Okay, so in the new codex, which, by the way, I was already shitting on. And I think it's the worst codex I've ever experienced. I've only been playing the game for like three years, so I've only done like ninth and 10th, and I have two armies, so there's a couple of different codexes that I've hit. But uh, this is like the worst fucking codex we've ever heard. It's absolute shit, okay? That's just from the rules perspective. And then all of the sudden, it comes out, somebody found that there are going to be female custodian guards. Okay, and uh, it, it look we can just look. I mean, we let's go over just some of the responses uh, that are out there. You guys can get an idea of how this is going. But here's the thing: we've been through this before. Okay, we've we've experienced this in Marvel. We've experienced this in Star Wars. And by this, I mean this exact conversation. This exact bunch of angry people seeing things completely different, yelling about uh changes okay so this guy says lots of fedoras and neck beards who have never played a moment of 40k in their lives suddenly have a strong opinion on the genitalia of the 10,000 magic super soldiers of the adeptus custodies and i'm gonna just say it like this i don't think this person's being very nice i'm just gonna throw that out there i don't think this is somebody that's trying to uh fucking <laughs> bridge some gaps uh you know this is uh toxic positivity right um and then of course you have it on the other side here right uh here we go all artwork of custodies have been male in codexes the lore is very clearly about this custodies are brotherhood of sons and nobles all the artwork confirms this games workshop is simply lying when they can't claim blah 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 blah. uh now we all know the reason they are rewriting the core rules uh, core lore of 40k in order to pander to ESG and DEI masters who collectively own a quarter of the stock. Blah, 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 blah. We've heard this before, right? Okay. Um, there's other things going on. People real upset. And you got to wonder, too. Uh, and then again, you it, it, like we again, we have seen this so many different times before. It's it's like. People are just so fucking nasty and mean to each other, and there's, like, no actual conversation being had about it, right? Uh, This dude's like, live react to misogynist chuds over the Adeptus Custodes being equal opportunity employers. And, like, it's another one of these things where, like, 
Like, Martin, you are being a fucking asshole. And the idea of just throwing around, you know, misogynist, racist, and all this, this has literally become shorthand for I do not like this person, right? So I fucking hate all these people. I'm just going to be honest with you. I hate all of these people. I hate all the people that are on the one side being like, you're a fucking misogynist, you neck beard, incel, whatever the fuck. And I hate all of the other people that are like, bro, it's the woke agenda, DEI, robots taking over our brains, you know, ambiguity on everything. Like, I hate, I hate both groups equally. I'm an equal opportunity hater. I fucking hate you. I hate both of you. You're all so fucking dumb. But let's take a look at the actual situation here because I do think there's nuance and I do think there is a conversation to be had here, not just about how these things are handled amongst fans, but how they are handled by companies. Because I will say, and I want to kind of put forward to you, that in a lot of these situations, it's actually not even the initial thing or the controversy that makes it really, really bad. I think it's actually the response from the company. And I think companies can make something like this even worse, right? Like, yes, there can something can happen, and the way the public takes that is like just a part of it, and it's like it's the responsibility falls to the company to take how a thing is perceived and explain what it actually is. Again, we talk about this with Star Wars all the time. My biggest complaint of Star Wars over the past five to six years has been the PR. It has been how they've handled situations like this and potentially made it even worse, okay? And I think you're seeing an example of that right here and right now. And a couple of different things I want to say. This is this is one of those situations where, again, I'm unfortunately going to have to shit all over a big company that will probably be super petty about it because these people are so fucking sensitive and they'll probably never want to work with me, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I, I, f go fuck yourself. I really don't care. You guys absolutely suck. You're, you're, GW is a really stupid company. They're stupid, and they're beyond – It's it's a – it's not just this – it's it's worse than that. It is how they handle almost every aspect of business, okay? And let me explain what I'm talking about. So just out of curiosity to the chat, what would you guys say would be the worst possible way for GW to handle this situation? Does anybody have any ideas or, or thoughts about this? What would be the worst way for them to handle this. What do you think? What do you think? Any ideas out there? <sighs> Say nothing. I think that's better than what they're doing, actually. Call the fans sexist. Yeah, I would say that's part of it for sure. Uh, suck it up, nerds. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think that would be uh, bad, too. Saying we need some titties in our custodies army. I actually think that's not a bad way to take it. Like, if they were literally, like, got out in front of it and were like, you know what's awesome? Boobs. You know what's even more awesome? Big old golden custodian boobs. boobs. And actually, on that note, on that note. Uh, there's another group, you know, we talked about like the extreme right and the extreme left and uh, how much we hate all of those people. But you know what group gets lost in the sauce here? And I actually do feel bad for this group. Do you guys, does anybody here know of the streamer slash YouTuber named Bricky? Anybody? Anybody? So... Bricky 
great content creator, awesome guy, and he also has a thing for uh, muscle mommies, big old muscular fucking ladies. He's into it. It's like his whole thing. I'm not kidding. He's he's very openly into it. And uh, I really do think that you know it's unfair what happens to people like him in a situation like this because I'm sure he's really excited. He gets more muscle mommies. And there's so many people fighting and, and wanting it to make it something uh, that it's not. And I just think we need to remember about people like that, you know? Like, can can is his way of enjoying the hobby not valid? You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude. So, kind of sucks. Anyway, here's the thing. The worst thing I think the company could do is, like, lie. Gaslight. Block people. Like, just be genuinely dumb. And that is, unfortunately, exactly what they did. Okay, now let's, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do on this. Um, and I know it's Warhammer, so some of you guys are like, just fucking open the Coke. Stop talking about it. Just relax. We're going to open the Coke. But I want to, here's what I want to do. Do you guys know what a steel man is, chat? We've talked about this before, right? You guys know what a steel man is? Steel manning an argument is like the opposite of a straw man. Right? We've talked about this. You can't straw man somebody's argument and 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 blow it over. That's like a debating tactic that is what I would describe as uh bad faith. Bad faith is a straw man. A steel man is the opposite of that. A steel man is a good faith interpretation of that. It's like let's give the most charitable iron steel version of their argument. That's what a steel man is, okay? So within the example of this, let's let's do a steel man. Let's do a steel man for the disgruntled fans, okay? And, you know, we looked at the one guy's tweet, and I'm, there's a ton of videos out there. Dude, trust me, there is literally no shortage of people freaking out about this topic, just like all of these stupid culture war topics. That's what it is, and people lose their fucking minds. Um, but let's steel man it. Let's steel man the people that are really upset. I think their argument would be, this is a change in the lore. This is not something that you would have seen coming if you just studied the lore. And this feels like that sort of touristy thing, right? Where you're having people come into the hobby and maybe the hobby itself is changing to attract these other kind of people into the hobby. And maybe there's a fear that Warhammer as it was would change to bring more people in or to be more inclusive or whatever. And then it would lose its identity, right? And to be fair to those people, We've seen that happen. Like, I think a version of that is happening in Star Wars, frankly. And a version of that might even be happening in Marvel, although I think they're going to sort of curtail it and uh, change it a little bit, right? And so, if that's the Steel Man, and that's what it is, and then, you know, some people, like, go into the ESG thing, and they really hate ESG, DEI, and all that, right? They're just like, ah, oh, dude, it's all a fucking evil whatever thing. And so, again... I don't necessarily feel that way. I feel like the way you engage in those things determines if it's good or not it's not like a blanket statement of like everything that comes from that abbreviation is bad right but again if we steel man the argument if we look at how people look at this change and they just want warhammer to remain warhammer i think that's fair and i think there's ways that you could change warhammer to make it kind of uh unrecognizable one thing i always think of is are they gonna try to water warhammer down because Warhammer is fucking brutal. It is the grim darkness of the far future. It's crazy. Every aspect of Warhammer has like a real dark either twist or reveal or like horrible fucking thing that's going on. It's really dark. 
And so if people like if you if GW got on a uh, investor call, right? And they were like, you know, we want to change Warhammer overall to make it a little more PG, a little bit more accessible to young people, et cetera, et cetera. Like, dude, I would be upset. I'd be like, no, you are changing a fundamental aspect of what it is, right? Now let's steel man the other side. And we don't have to be rude and call people incels like they do, but let's steel man their side. Warhammer is a game where you paint plastic army men and women and you set up scenarios and you battle on a tabletop rolling dice imagining how the characters are fighting in your mind and frankly any way you want to paint or kit bash or come up with your own lore for your army is uh, fine. In fact, Warhammer used to literally have the option to make your own Space Marine chapter. It was like a part of the thing and, and, and it could get detailed. You could like come up with your own lore and stuff. And a lot of people did that. So baked into the hobby is the idea of doing your little miniature fake army however you want to do your little fake miniature army, right? And I think also the idea of having female custodians, I mean, here's the thing for me, like from a lore perspective, because like I play custodies. I have two armies. One of them is a space marine army and one of them is a custodies army. And the thing about this drama is it didn't just happen with custodies. There's been a big conversation about female space Marines. And it's been another thing that's been just, uh, again, I hate both sides of it. I've seen very few posts from anybody in the community talking about female space Marines. That's not nasty, you know, trying to be flagrant, piss somebody off and being a real douche bang on both sides. But frankly, for me, I think female custodies make more sense than female space Marines. Female space Marines. So the space Marine program, and now we're going to get real sweaty. Okay. Now we're going to get real sweaty. You thought we were, we're just getting started. Hold on to your butts. Okay. Space Marines go through a process of be being a human that then gets like cut up and has all these extra organs added. They get blown up with hormones and all this crazy shit. They get giganticism. And it's this absolutely fucking brutal process. And a small percentage of the people that go into that process actually make it as a space marine. Okay? And so to me, within the grim darkness, I cannot really see female bodies being able to deal with that trauma for the most part the male body is a little bit more resistance due to bone density and you know muscular structure and things of that nature i don't really see it i do not see a female living through the space marine experience okay but custodies are different custodies are made like a ferrari Every part of them is genetically engineered. And so they're made from scratch. There's no surgeries. There's no invasiveness. They are literally genetic masterpieces. Okay? And so I would say that a female being identified as potentially an incredible custodian and then going through that gene process, that makes a lot more sense to me than becoming a space Marine. But at the end of the day, it's all 
just make believe, man. It's all just make believe. And, and and I think I think the real problem here is that you're it's it would be one thing if like female player shows up to the shop or male player that's that guy, right? And this guy's like, here's my or this lady's like, here's my female space marine army. If we were just like, oh, cool, okay, so yeah, you have a female space, and you don't like, it's not like you're changing the entire fucking canon. It's just that for this match, you have to stretch your imagination to allow for the possibility of a female space marine thing. Maybe from an alternate dimension. Maybe these are just the baddest ladies you've ever seen. Whatever, right? And then maybe like. You had a dude that was like, here's my all-male custodies army. And just didn't really want female custodies. And is like, no, like, this is what I have. You know, or maybe another thing. I don't even know. But I, I guess what I'm saying is uh, the aggression and the anger and the fighting, it all feels super theatrical to me. Like, if you just take a step back from it, I think it's not that big of a deal. And I think it's like, yeah, it's it's fine. There's probably stuff in the lore you don't like anyways. Like, the lore's not even fucking consistent. Like, custodies are these golden gods. And then at one point, they're getting cut down by, like, regular-ass fucking, uh, what was it, Thousand Sons or something like that in the old lore. I think, uh, I forget the author that did that, but that shit happens. And we just fucking ignore it. We're like, oh, yeah, in the old lore, the custodians, yeah, we just fucking ignore it. So I just, I don't know, man. It's another one of those stupid situations with a bunch of stupid people being stupid. Uh, and so I wanted to explain it and give my take and mostly just call everybody stupid. So what do you think? Are you offended? Are you mad? What's What's the what? Sound stupid? Yeah, it is. Wait a minute, are you saying that the, it sounds stupid because it's Warhammer? Because then you're wrong. Because then you're wrong. <clears throat> I'm calling my congressman right now. Oh, okay, good. That's probably a good way to do it, yeah. Uh, women injected with testosterone and stuff, possible? Yeah. I mean, I you know, we don't know for sure, but I would say just looking at some of the ladies that fight in the UFC... Uh, yeah, I, 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 if you told me they had injected some testosterone, I would believe you. I, I'd probably be like, oh, yeah, no, I, I could I could see that happening. Bro, I spent 500 bucks on Coca-Cola every 70 days. What? What? Oh, you know what? There was one other thing I wanted to say, though. Uh, one other, wait, well, One more thing. One more thing on this. One more thing about this, okay? GW is really stupid, too, because what they did was try to come out and pretend that it was always that way. So GW came out and said there have always been female custodians ever since the first 10,000 were created. Why? Why did you say that? Why don't you just say this is a new thing? The custodians, um, their ranks are low in number, and so now they're getting female custodians to try to, like, you know, help out. Like, they're making it worse. They're just trying to fucking, like, gaslight people into being like, it's always been a thing. Uh, No, it hasn't. Don't treat me like a child. No, it hasn't. It's a new thing. You are redconning this. So, again, I think that I think GW is doing, like, and, you know, the other thing that's really fucked up about this, how crazy is it that... They basically just nerfed the custodians, made them way less powerful. And they added females. Like, is nobody going to call them on that? That's potentially super sexist. You just made them weaker than they've ever been functionally as an army. And also just slipped in that there's ladies. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I think they're just, ugh. It's just so silly, man. Uh, Super Sly 75 says, let them have Adeptus Sororitas. No female custodies. Here's the thing, though. You don't have to have any female custodies. 
Like nobody's going to force you to have female custodians, right? I think a lot of people, and I don't know for sure, because I've seen some of your chats and shit in here, and I, I don't know you, right? So I can't necessarily judge you. But I will say a lot of people are just making this something it's not. Like nobody's forcing you to have female custodians in your army. Do you know what I mean? Uh, they've been doing that. Every company. That's why people are upset on every side. Nothing is going to change because people that will never call them out on it. Yeah, I think like I think that's really a big part of this, though, is it's like they kick up a little controversy and then they make it worse. And then they try to, like, pick a side. And that is just so dumb, dude. So I really think it's it's stupid. No. Yeah. Everybody's talking about the Coke. Should we ju should we just um, should we start unboxing the Coke? Is that what it, is that? It, throw a one into the chat if it's if you think it's just time to get into the Coke. Just let me just I, I, I because we could keep going on this Warhammer stuff. You know, like I could keep going on this stuff. You know, okay. How about this? Throw a one into the chat if you want to keep going on Warhammer. Damn, that's crazy! Look at all those ones. Unbelievable. I've never seen so many ones. Oh, wait, what? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys, guys, you're... <laughs> Calm down there. Calm down with the twos. I don't know what that's for. Okay. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Should we start, should we start getting into some Coca-Cola's here? Should we? Let me just have one more sip of coffee, and then we'll get into this Coca-Cola's, okay? Okay, so here we have some Coca-Cola, and just so everybody knows, just so everybody knows what we're trying to do here, we are trying to collect all the full set of this Marvel Coca-Cola collaboration, okay, so here's all the ones you can get from regular Coke. Here's all the ones you can get from Coke Zero. And I'm going to try to get all of these. And we've got a bunch of Coke. We might have to get more Coke. And also there is the possibility here that I will lose my fucking mind. If these are all Daredevil, I am going to freak out. That's a promise. Okay. So on that note, on that note, here we here this is the first one we opened yesterday. It's got a bunch of Daredevils, okay? It's got a, yes, yes. This one was Daredevil. They're not all Daredevil though. No, it doesn't say it on the box. It's random. You guys are just trying to trigger me. Okay, so we have Daredevil. So we can cross him off the list. Here we go. Let's open the next one. What do you think? Which one? Which one should I get? Chat, which one should I get? Eh? Ah! All right, here we go. What do you guys think it's going to be? What do you guys think it's going to be? What character? What character do you think it's going to be? <laughs> <Daredevil>. <laughs> ah!
Uh, okay, we got another Daredevil. That's got to be a coincidence, dude. <laughs> That's funny, dude. That's funny. That's real funny. Uh Okay, what okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There ain't no way. There ain't no way. There's not it's not a joke. There's no there no. What what character do you think it is? What ca what character do you think it is? What? It's got to be, it's got to just be a coincidence. It, this cannot possibly be. Hang on. Let's open it. Let's open some of the zeros. Let's open some of the zeros. Let's open a zero. Let's, let's open a zero. Let's get the fucking vibes right in here. You're all wrong. Shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Let's let's open it. Let's open a fucking zero. Hang on. Okay, what is this one going to be? Which one's this one going to be? Iron Man! It's Iron Man! Let's go! Okay, so we have Iron Man and a couple Daredevils. Um, okay. Let's open another zero. Let's open another zero. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be, guys? You guys think I, you guys are funny? No, it's gonna be Doc Strange. It's gonna be Doc Strange or something. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it up for you guys.
Okay, hang on. 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 I got one case from a from a different let's let's break the I think it's I still don't believe it. I think it's a funny coincidence. I think it's a funny coincidence. Now hang on. I've got I got this one. This one's 24 cans and it's from a different place. So this one is going to be different and it's going to set us on a whole new thing. It's going to set us on a, a whole new fucking thing. Okay? It's a whole new world after this one. Which one do you think it is? Which which character do you think it is, Chad? No! 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 We're going to try. We're going to try one more. We're going to We're going to try one more. We're 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 going to try one more. Please, for the love of all things fucking holy, who is... No!
<sighs> okay. Okay, um, <laughs> well, 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 hmm. <clears throat> well. That is, uh, that's fucking crazy. Like, what? <laughs> fucking what? Somebody make it make sense. Somebody explain it. Somebody make it make sense. 18 each. Here's the same one. Somebody make it make sense. What do we do? What do we do? Like, what are you, like, what, what, what? So wait a minute. First thing is, uh, I can't believe those people weren't trolling me. I can't believe those people weren't trolling me. There was a guy trying to warn me about this yesterday. There was a dude trying to warn me. He was like, bro, just so you know, like, I work at Coke and those are all going to be Iron Man and Daredevil. And I was like, dude, shut your fucking mouth. Basically. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So what's the strategy? So what do you do? What do we have to do? We got to wait now for the next thing? <coughs> There's no way. How does that, like, how does it make sense? How does it make sense? So now, instead, so it... <sighs> On a complete side note, is anybody in the market for, let's say, $500 worth of Coke cans? Just, just out of curiosity, unrelated, asking for a friend, would, would anybody like some Coca-Cola? Oh... Uh... Fuck. I mean, I don't even know what to do. 
I don't even know what to do. <clears throat> okay, let's let's read through some. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> let's read through some of this shit. <clears throat> ain't no way, <laughs> dude. Ain't no way. Okay, uh, Cool Bear with the 10 spot says, I'm going to Star Wars 22-hour theater marathon on May the 4th. It's from 7 a.m. to 5 a.m. Can't wait. Any advice on how I could stay awake and how to prepare? I'm wearing Galaxy Edge Palpatine robes too. Nerd Vengeance for life. Okay, so um, I think what would help you throughout that entire experience is some uh, Coca-Cola. And, you know, for, for a relatively low price, uh, I know a guy that could get you some Coca-Cola. You could have it kind of throughout. You might have to sneak it in, you know, uh, but uh, you know, I know a guy. I could probably um, get you get you into that. Uh, Fan Jecture says there's now a third option: toxic neutral. Yeah, was I toxic neutral? Is I was I am I a little toxic neutral? I guess that's true. I shouldn't be mad at them for being so stupid, right? I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so yeah, Leon says if you get an extra Wolverine, I call dibs. <clears throat> Uh, just H says, imagine loving Daredevil so much that you buy five hundred dollars worth of Coke cans with his face on it. Jacob Stowe says, the cans match the portrait on the side. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh nerd executive says ha 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 uh andre says den of daredevil cans yeah 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 yeah. you don't say that <laughs> mars says put a one to the chat if it's not a coincidence ha ha much love josh thanks man uh Nerd Executive says, literally the most Josh thing I've ever seen. Nerd Avengers for life. Oh, right on, right on. Um, Representative Binks says, my man is dying inside. Um, yeah. PJ says, Josh, we love you, but F in the chat, bro. Return them Cokes. Yeah, I'll have to try to return some of them, I mean. I lost my temper a little bit and it Hulk smashed them. But yeah. God damn it. Uh Tyler says, damn, I didn't know you were such a DD fan. Josh, uh, thanks, brother. P appreciate that one. Uh, Rossi <clears throat> says, do you know that they tend to sell contests like this regularly, regionally, uh, to make them harder to collect? I will, uh, I did not know that. Uh, Genwin says, Papa Josh, you're killing me. Hmm. Yes. Uh, Renee says, dude, I had to walk out of my office. I'm cracking up so bad. This is amaze balls. P.S. Please don't tell my wife about this. Nerd Avengers for life. Love you and the fam, Josh. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Chris Listenfeld says, Daredevil is S tier. <clears throat> C-Dub says, here's five for rehab. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. 
Uh, James R says, there's a couple to get you back on your feet. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Vagabond of Light with a five spot says, uh, let's get some supers in the chat. <laughs> oh, my man, out. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Tobin says, silly goose. Hulk can't open those cans. Haven't you seen the commercials? You need Ant-Man to hook it up. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I do remember those commercials. Uh, Trev says, I spent 50 USD buying the first appearance of Century. First issue last night. $50 well spent. Good for you. <laughs> God damn it, Trev. Uh, Vorlando says, uh, Coke ruins lives. Yeah, I can see that now. You know, I think I now understand. I think I now get it. There's no way, dude, right? Are They're all... They're all Daredevil and Iron Man. So what? So what does that? So what does that mean? Can somebody make it make sense? Okay. Look, we'll, <clears throat> we'll let's get through more of these chats. Then maybe we'll open up another one. Uh, Trinity, Second Street Marvel says, James Gunn is laughing, thinking about how much your mother will have to pay to get her basement restored. God damn it. Uh, Talon says, I'm proud this is my first day as a nerd venger. Yeah, thanks. Uh, appreciate the support. Simple J, welcome to the nerd vengers. You are a nerd venger now. Uh, Life Bricks says, the fact that these aren't complete mystery cases with up to 12 per case is insane to me. Make different rarities at that point. Yeah, I don't get it. I still don't get it because like, okay, again, people were hitting me up yesterday and saying that's what it was. And I was like, there's no way because Coca-Cola is not stupid. Marvel's not stupid. And if they did something like that, it would be stupid. You want people to be buying. You want people to be doing what I was doing and to be going for the random shit. Like that's the whole thing that would push sales. Like there's no, like, I don't understand. I still don't get it. Uh, John says, try one more box just for shits. Yeah, we'll try one in a second here. Uh, Kevin says, thanks for that. Now I know how to collect the whole set without spending $500. God damn it. Uh, JJ Lamont says, uh, sorry, brother, but this was the funniest thing I've seen in a minute. Well, I'm glad you had a, uh, uh. Brayden, uh, says den of double D's. Um, yep. Uh, Atoske says, I told you to check those handle holes. Uh, Captain Ziggett says, put a vending machine in your front yard to make some of that 500 bucks back. I might have to, bro. I might have to go around selling these things. I, I, I'm going to go around the neighborhood. I'm starting up a fucking lemonade stand or something. I don't know. Um, Mike S. Hangout says, on the upside, Daredevil is a cool character. Are you okay, Josh? No, not really. Uh, Galen says, uh, best stream I've seen in a long time. Uh, 420 Nerd Vengeance for Life. Hey, look, I'm glad you're having a good time. Matei says, definitely worth my money, by the way. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker, dude. Ah! No! God damn it. Uh, Joey Ebbs, this is the kind of content you need daily now that you're a streamer exclusively. Epic. Um... Maybe once a year. We'll see. Carl says, uh, so this is the brilliance we were looking for for Muscle Mommy DD Cokes for Life. Yep. Uh, Rossi says, uh, you could have bought a PS5 for that amount of Coke you bought. No! No! Fuck. I guess you're right. Uh, Sajid says, on the plus side, this is likely a world record in some type of way. It's all recorded for us in crisp 4K. <laughs> Hope you have a large... Freezer. Uh, Stephen J says, pretty hardcore villain origin story, Josh. Yeah, we're going to write a, I'm going to, I'm going to clip this out and I'm going to tweet it at the Coca-Cola company. Um, so. It w yes. Um, Ammo side B says, I always forget to use these, LMAO. I hope Marvel doesn't bring RDJ back and just massacres my boy. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, Clifton says, is this enough to buy a case off of you? Uh, I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll hit you up. Mr. Iceberg says, I think we may need an extreme rage warning banner. Yeah, but let's be real. You should have seen it coming. I cannot fucking believe that happened. The Exodus says, 
if you're unable to return them, USPS Food Drive is May 11th, and you can drop some off at your local post office or give them to your mailman. That's very nice. At least we will be able to do that. Uh, Aaliyah says, my understanding is, based on what others say in chat, there is a drawing on the case, and it's staggered rollout during the summer. Staggered rollout, of course. Of course. Because that's obvious and all over all their bullshit. Of course. Staggered rollout. Of course. A staggered rollout, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it is. Didn't you read the press release? I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. Definitely not. Uh, SF Nova 82 with a 10 spot. That's very generous, man. Thank you. Says Josh, I'll hook you up with uh, whatever cans New Jersey gets. Ah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Jose says, now you know why they were staring at you. That is correct. A three one red says this has been an amazing Monday morning. Thanks for kicking off the week right. Well, I'm glad somebody's having a good time. Thank you, uh, Rossi with the two bucks. Appreciate you, bro. Okay. So, like, are we gonna hang on a second? Hang, just hang on. Okay, here's one of the ones that you guys smashed. So you're saying you're saying that that means it's Daredevil? So, but hang on then. Then this one means it's Sam Wilson, right? Because it's got Sam Wilson there? It's Iron Man! So what the fuck does that even mean? Why not buy the individual cans? Hmm. Why not buy the individual cans? <clears throat> it's a good question, Carlos. I don't know how to answer you. <clears throat> Why not buy the individual? 
Uh, okay. Uh, Andres, thanks, man. Uh, Rossi says, I may still be unemployed, but you made me feel so much better <laughs> with your incompetence. No! Thank you for your generosity. No! John White, hey, thanks, man. Uh, welcome back. And Leon says, did you get that Wolverine? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get it. Okay. Um, what the fuck are we going to do now? What? We have to do something fun. We have to, we, we need, we need... We need <laughs> You smoked Han and Chewy. I did a little bit. I did a little bit. Okay, so we've got hang on, let me show you. Somebody somebody clipped part of this out. Let's just uh let's see what this is, because we, we have to share this. Um that's a pretty good one. Looks like minutes, seconds, maybe before explosion. And then what do we got over here? Okay, okay. Not my best moment. Not my best moment. Um, okay, so here's what we'll say. We'll tweet. Today was not my most successful stream. I think that's probably good. <clears throat> Should I tag Coke? I'll do a I'll do an edited version and I'll tag Coke on the edited version. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, can uh, is there? Can we watch something? Let's find something. Oh, you know what? There is actually something I wanted to watch. Thank God. Thank God. Let me get this pulled up. <clears throat> uh. Okay. <clears throat> this... <clears throat> All right, let's check this out. This is uh, why Invincible is crushing Marvel and DC. But is it, though? The best superhero show out there right now, and possibly of all time at this point. If I had to compare it to anything out there, it would probably be Spider-Man 2. Because it's Okay, damn the glazing is crazy right off the bat. Let me just say, too, I'm not going to like interrupt every little part and be like, mm -hmm, but... Let's just kind of keep it a stack, tell you where I'm at with it. Invincible's very good. Season one was incredible. Season two is a step back. X-Men 97 is better, but Invincible's still really good. Okay, we're on the same page. We know where I'm at. Here we go. Let's see Let's see what he's got to say. It's this very wholesome superhero story that you can bring the whole family to that also happens to have a train scene. <laughs> 
The whole adult superhero thing isn't a completely original idea with stuff like Watchmen and the boys out there. And I love the Watchmen movie. Haven't seen the show though. And I love the boys, even though I've only seen season one. And you know what? Even though it's not an adult superhero movie, The Incredibles was my introduction to a story where superheroes were real and showed off how the world would function if there were actually heroes among us. And it's no secret that people love- The Incredibles is goaded. Incredibles is goaded these kinds of stories even if we are living through a time where most casual audiences are getting tired of superhero movies so i wanted to make a video for you not only to explain why invincible is so great but also point out what it is doing better than any other superhero cinematic universe at the moment and if marvel and dc want to mature with their fan base over the next few years they should probably start taking notes from robert kirkman but before we get into that let's do a little exercise together have you ever tried googling your name for fun and no. see what happens well i did that recently and said how the f do they know about that there were things i thought were long gone or completely forgot about but most importantly some of the most confidential information i could think of was just out there to the public that's why i've been using aura the sponsor of today's video because there are data brokers out there that are trying to sell your information to scammers spammers and anyone else who may want to target you your full name email home address health records your relatives it's all out there but with aura i get shown which data brokers are selling my information along Along with automatically having opt-out requests being submitted for me so i don't that actually seems like kind of a good thing it's kind of maybe i'll get that shit. i have to log in every single time a new broker gets a hold of my private information just on my new email account alone aura found 16 brokers who were selling my information cleaning up all my info not only helps reduce the amount of spam i get but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts bank accounts or other sensitive information it's really easy to set up so i don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus vpns password management parental controls identity theft insurance and more i get everything in aura at one affordable price aura is always on doing the hard work of keeping me safe so i can just focus on making these videos with as much peace of mind as i can get before i get screamed at in the comments section anyway so you can go to aura.com slash chases cool. to start your two-week free trial which is also just one click away if you look in the description of this video so cool, thank cool. you again to aura for sponsoring this video and now let's talk about why invincible is so damn good because right. i think the biggest misstep marvel has made during phase four and five so far is that they have waited too long to grow up with their audience i was 11 years old when my dad took me to go see iron man but right now i'm 27 too old and unless i'm the only one that has been aging since 2008 most of this fan base has grown up too and their taste has been growing with them and i'm not saying the current marvel movies can't be enjoyed by somebody older than 15 because even a 15 year old didn't laugh at thor love and thunder True. <laughs> there is a reason Yo, real talk though damn that movie sucked and so many people loved the netflix daredevil universe to True. the point where even kevin feige said what the fuck are we doing here and scrapped everything that True. was already shot for the disney plus version of the show not it technically everything but a lot of it and uh maybe more than was first reported because it does seem like they're going pretty hardcore in the direction of like the old stuff right because if you are spending all of this money on Daredevil Born Again and can't even live up to the dark and gritty vibe of those original three seasons, what was the point of trying out the entire Netflix experiment in the first place? They are attempting to make R-rated content now True. with Deadpool 3 and Blade on the horizon, if Blade is ever actually made by the time Mahershal Ali checks into the retirement home. But oh, the groundwork no. for an R-rated Deadpool was already laid out by Fox, and Marvel really hyped up echo being their first big hard r rated project but this was the only violent thing in the show and yeah. invincible says <laughs> Invincible feels like the show that Marvel should be making now, but I don't mean that in the way you might be thinking. The reason Invincible is a great show is not because of how gory it can get. Does it make me go, oh shit, every single time it happens? Of course it does. But the reason this show resonates with so many people is because it feels like a show that grew up with superhero fans instead of making something that is still meant for children. If I had to compare Invincible to any other show out there, I think it would be Game of Thrones for a couple of reasons. 
reasons. For starters, HBO knew Game of Thrones was going to attract a purely adult audience. And so many of us grew up with fantasy franchises like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and Aragon. Who remembers that one? We were God given damn that movie, bro. I love those books. That movie sucked so badly. There were rumors they were going to like do a new version of it, right? Which would be pretty sick. And something that we didn't know we needed so badly. A political drama disguised as a fantasy series. But I think the reason Game of Thrones exploded in popularity was because you never knew what would happen next. The reason I found out about Invincible in the first place was because my boy DJ showed me this scene when the yeah. show first premiered. And I know I'm not alone in that because so many people jumped on the hype train yep. after this got released. And yeah, there's- Yeah, and I mean, like, it's a crazy twist. We've talked about this before, but it, even Kurt Kirkman, he brought that twist in a lot sooner, right? So he had, and I think it was Eric Larson actually that gave him the idea. He was going to have that in like issue 30 or issue 32. And Larson or somebody else at Image was like, bro, no, do it now. Do it now. And so I think they ended up doing it issue seven and it worked. Like it was crazy. It really blew people away. And then everybody wanted to know like, what the hell? Uh, and so they do it in the very first episode of the show, which is a big part of why it kind of popped off. A hundred percent agree. Blood and gore everywhere. But the coolest thing about this sequence was that it set the tone for the rest of the show. Subverting expectations has been a big topic over the past few years yep. in movies. But I think when you actually do a good job at subverting those expectations, people are so enthralled with your story that they forget to even bring it up. People didn't say, wow, Game of Thrones does such a great job at subverting my expectations because they're too busy saying, holy shit, they killed the main guy in the first season. It's not about how Mm -hmm. Worry you can make your action scenes, but rather warning your audience to buckle in because in this superhero universe, nobody is safe. Every time a new villain or monster comes on screen, I genuinely have no idea if the heroes are going to win because sometimes they don't. Against the villains, we are supposed to laugh at. You want to yeah. know why fans get excited to see a new Avengers movie? Tell it's me. not just because they want to see all of these characters show up on screen together. Because unlike the rest of the Marvel movies, in these big epic Epic events, the audience really has no idea which heroes are going to make it out alive. Unless, of course, they already announced a sequel at Comic-Con for a character that already turned to dust. But when you watch a standalone MCU or DCEU film, anybody that's watched at least 10 movies in their lifetime is probably not sitting there like, oh no, I hope Aquaman makes it out of this movie alive. So to create that kind of paranoia in the first episode's post credit scene, mind you, you make a deal with your audience, promising that this isn't your run of the male superhero story. And I think that promise is kept in every single aspect of the plot because a lot of these Marvel and DC characters do have some pretty dark backstories, but I feel like the live action movies have never done the best job at making us care about the human behind the mask. But in Invincible, the characters are dealing with real human shit. And I'm not even talking about just the superhero. I think this is crazy recency bias. It's like he's making some points, but he's like extrapolating it to like all of Marvel where I think it's it's like that's not I don't even think that's true. Like I I think even some of the phase four shit is crazy and some of it subverts too much. Like uh, uh what's the Jack Kirby John again with all the weird people? Um not the inhumans. What the fuck is that you know what I'm talking about? The Eternals. Um I thought that movie was kind of wild. It subverts some stuff. I think Shang-Chi subverts some stuff. I think Shang-Chi has some darkness in it. I think the Marvel formula, like the thing that's kind of weird is like, I don't even think Kirk Kirkman's like doing Marvel stuff and he's certainly pushing it and doing his own flavor of it. But you know, Marvel had crazy um, like backstories and, and uh, introductions to these characters so, yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know. Heroes either. Mark's mom, Debbie, gets so much development in season two, and pretty much all of it is the saddest shit on TV. Watching a woman transform into basically a widow, but it's not because her husband died, but rather because he called her a pet and faked feelings for her their entire relationship, and dealing with the ramifications of all the murder that man committed, even to people that were involved in your... Worst part of the show.
it's fine, but it's like this shit wasn't even like I was like, can we get through this? Like, I don't know, man. I, I feel like this dude is just glazing like it hard on it. This part of the show wasn't even good. It's not like terrible, but it, it was not engaging for me. I'm like, mm, yeah, I know it's it's not in the comics. This is like Kirkman trying to update with the he did the same thing with Amber. Like he's trying to like update and shit like that. I, I I respectfully disagree, sir. Personal life? I mean, yeah, it's some pretty dark shit. And if that wasn't bad enough, you have fucking big brain Sheen right here snapping your arm like a twig as you try to protect that ex-husband's new baby that he had with a praying mantis. The show does such a good job at making the audience go, damn, can't this woman catch a break? <laughs> Oh shit, sorry Debbie. But then you have everything involving Mark, who I think is a much more interesting character in season two. The whole first season is pretty basic in terms of this guy is just learning how to be a superhero, but season two is all about not turning into the villain, which is even harder to fight against when your role model was the bad guy the whole time. I know this is a hot debate among the nerd culture out there, but one of the things I liked about Zack Snyder's universe was how he was willing to force some of these heroes to make difficult decisions. I don't think he explored it as well as he could have in terms of Batman killing people. So Batman can't kill is canon. And I'm like, okay, well, the first thing I want to do when you say that. <laughs> 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 but in Man of Steel, when Superman is forced to break his moral code by killing Zod in order to save those innocent people, I can feel that pain. And I don't think the rest of the DCEU or even the MCU ever did a good enough job at forcing our heroes to make those tougher calls. If you look at every single Marvel Bro, I know he's not really saying that the characters in Marvel haven't made tough calls. Like, what is this, dude? What? I don't know, brother. That's crazy. Marvel character. Most of them are pretty much the same character as they were in their first solo movie. Bro, what the fuck are you talking about? Iron Man went through one of the most incredible arcs of all time. You're not the guy to lay down on the wire and let the other guy walk over you. Come on, bro. That is wild movie. Except for the fact that they might be a little less cocky or a completely different character depending on who is directing them. But no matter what your preconceived notion of that character is before going into the movie, there's like a So we know this is a younger dude. And you know, look, I'm not trying to be like super rude here, but it's just there's a lot of uh vapor here. There's not a lot of substance to what this guy's saying. Like this is this is a wild fucking take, not really backed up by a lot of evidence. Like if you were if you're gonna make these points, like make the points, draw me to the evidence, show me the evidence. What are you talking about? 95% chance you will feel exactly the same way about those characters at the end as you did at the start of the movie or show. Invincible is the classic, I'll never give up or kill anybody kind of superhero. But what makes Mark so interesting in this season is that constant back and forth of trying to be- Mark the has literally given up like twice in the show already. What is this guy talking about? Best version of himself, but also diving into what happens when that line is pushed too far. I think the scene of him finally breaking and killing somebody for the first time is one of the best in the entire series. And it goes back to that Game of Thrones comparison, because now I have no idea where Mark's story is going to go from here, since this is a world where it feels like anything can happen. And please don't be one of those assholes that spoils the comic for the rest of us who choose to be illiterate, all right? Another thing that is heavily improved on in season two is the relationship between Mark No it isn't Mark and Amber which I thought was by far the weakest part of season one but unlike some other students it is also probably the weakest part of season two videos out there Invincible actually listens to the fans and when they bro see people hate Amber so much that the breakup episode was applauded people were fucking cheering in the streets 
Holy shit. If something is not working for most of the audience, they pivot into something more people can relate to. I'm not a superhero by any stretch of the imagination, but being in a healthy, stable relationship while also being an entrepreneur who juggles multiple projects all at the same time is easier said than done a lot of days. And I think Invincible completely crushes that part of its storytelling. The relationship stuff is so hard to watch at times because of how relatable it feels. And it wouldn't feel that tough to watch if we didn't care about both of these characters Characters and their chemistry in the first place. I know pretty much every single video out there compares this show to The Boys, but I think what is cool about each of these shows is how differently they approach the genre. The Boys is great because it makes fun of all the superhero shit that is dumb in pop culture, and it takes place like in a what? world where the heroes are actually the villains, and the good guys are just the average Joe who has to live in a world of fear. But Invincible, on the other hand, feels like a tribute to everything comic books have created over the past century. It gives us a Spider-Man fight scene, a glimpse of Batman, and even though the multiverse stuff wasn't a huge focus in season two, the stuff we got was still pretty awesome. And between this and the Spider-Verse movies, it's clear that animation is the way to go when it comes to telling a lot of these superhero stories. I never really grew up watching the superhero animated shows, but it seems like everybody is more obsessed with X-Men 97 than any live action show Disney Plus has put out in recent memory. And I know they're working That's on a live action Invincible movie, and maybe it ends up being great, but as of now, I'm kind of like, why? I mean, yeah, the gore could look crazy in live action, I guess, but there's something about seeing all of it get animated one little frame at a time that makes me a bit more skeptical of seeing any other version of this. And who knows, maybe we'll get the live action movie before season three comes out because we had to wait. There's something about it being animated frame by frame that makes you enjoy that it's animated. What is that? Like, what is happening here? Am I crazy? Did I just break my... Like, did this stream just break me? I don't know what's going on. I can't even release this as a clip. This is absurd. Wait almost a thousand days before we got season two. And I know they make fun of that within the show and they have stated multiple times we won't have to wait as long for season three. But even though I really liked season one, there were so many things I had forgotten about by the time I started binging season two. But when my biggest complaint of a show is that I had to wait three years for the next season, that's how you know it's pretty good. And who knows, I already compared the story to Game of Thrones multiple times in the video and maybe Invincible will do the same thing and plummet in its final season. But I think in a world where most people complain about how boring superhero movies have gotten, it's refreshing to have a great show that I could recommend for the entire fan. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you as always. This is all of my social media right here, but please. I really expected that to be a much better video. I apologize. Uh, thought it was uh, going to be really insightful. Draw some really interesting comparisons. Look, maybe I'm crazy, but like, what was his point? He said, why Invincible is crushing Marvel and DC. Can anybody distill it down for us? What? What's the reason? What did he say? Please just like. Because of gore. Bro, I'm not trying to dog on the dude. Like, I mean, look, this video is doing very well for him. He's a relatively small channel and like, you know, shout out. to I, I understand what the grind is like. So, you know, good on you. But like, dude, I'm sorry. Like, there's just no, there's no point to what you're saying, man. Like, I don't understand. And the. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll just fucking move on. What a Monday. What a Monday so far, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? All right. Is there anything else uh, we should be talking about, thinking about? What, what, the, what, what, what the what? Are we getting out of here? I probably need to get out of here and rethink my life. I There's probably going to be another I quit video. Um, I... <sighs> Because of more complex characters, growth and stakes, I suppose. Uh, I suppose. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. My goodness. 
My goodness, what a day. What a day. Uh, okay, let's go over a couple of these uh, here. Uh, Joey says, you smoked Han and Chewy. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Mariana, thanks for the five spot, says, did you see Matt Sarah on Joe Rogan's podcast discussing Ahsoka? Made me want to facepalm so hard and my brain felt like I was going to melt. Uh, why? Uh, yeah, I saw the clip. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, Philip Hatch says with a five spot, is this what you meant last night about uh, Be Brilliant? All time great stream, for real, for real. Yeah, but we keep our secrets about the Prime stream. We can't just tell everybody all the secrets. Uh, Justin Yell says, clip it and send it to Coke. Oh, yeah, don't worry, that's coming. Uh, Samuel, here I here am I, says, I'm definitely pray for you, Josh. Uh, thanks. Yeah, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, John White says, finally back with a gold badge. Sorry for a long hiatus. Thank you for your prayers during the health battle. Josh, check your email DM for my email about Unity. I absolutely will, John. Um, and I'll try to get the character into the volume one, but we're pretty far into production. It's been, And I know it's not a perfect situation for you, but like, it's just been a long time, man. You know, I'll, I'll try to get your character in uh, to this next chapter that we're doing. Your character will definitely be a part of the story either way, but um, yeah, appreciate you, bro. Glad you're feeling better. Kyle says, thanks for the laughs, Josh. Finally got around to episode five of 97, and that ending brought me to tears. Yeah, man. That ending was crazy, huh? That ending was crazy, huh? Uh, I want to remind everybody about a couple of different things. Number one, we are giving away a $200 GameStop gift card, although now I should probably save it because I'm broke from Coke. Um, but we're going to give this away if you are a member here on YouTube or if you are a member over on Twitch or if you're both, you get entered to win the GameStop gift card. We're going to be giving this away on Friday. We're also... I'm going to be continuing our deep dives Wednesday night. We're going to continue our deep dive on Superman. Every month, the members and myself get together, and we deep dive on particular nerdy things. This month, we're deep diving on Superman. We've already learned a ton of crazy stuff about the Man of Steel, so I think that's awesome. Uh, we're going to continue that Wednesday night, and uh, we will be drawn for the gift card on Friday, okay? Sashin says, watching Spider-Man 2002 in theaters tonight. Yeah, yeah. Nerd Vengeance for Life. Let's go. Do you need a Coke? Do you need a Coke or something? Uh, Mariana with a two-spot says, Josh, I also started a podcast. Wish me luck. I do wish you luck. What did you mean about the Matt Sarah thing? I'll I'll check it out in the chat chat. What were you saying about uh, Matt Sarah? It made you want to facepalm? Why? Josh's next episode, live from the Betty Ford Clinic. I don't know what that means. Uh, John Sparks says, I was at V-Ball tournament for my daughter yesterday. Jamie Foxx walks up, taps my arm, and tells me I have a nice beard. Beard game validated. Damn, that's crazy. I guess that's one of the benefits of being out there in California, huh? Jamie Foxx can uh, tap you on the shoulder, you know what I mean? Uh, he mean your $500 a day coke habit. Oh, yes. So that's like for, uh, rehab or something like that? Is that what we're talking about? It means you gotta, uh, come problem. What the fuck? Uh, Ricky Rossi used the speed force on Thana Drake. Nerdvengers for life. Yeah, uh, that whole shit's crazy, man. I thought Drake's, uh, I thought Drake's clapback was incredible. I did not really like Rick Ross's, but he went real nasty. You know, he's being real fucking nasty. But, uh, I didn't really like the song. You know what I mean? Uh, Kendall says, donate the coke to the homeless shelter and write it off. Yeah, something like that is probably the move for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. Crazy, 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 crazy. Did Drake write it, though? I don't know. I'm not sure. Did you guys see that uh, Drake, I guess one of Kendrick's ghostwriters is now coming forward and, like, Drake's, like, 
shouting him out on Insta or something. Like, this shit's about to get wild. Like, it's getting real crazy out there. I didn't know Kendrick had ghostwriters. I mean, I guess probably everybody that works in commercial music probably has ghostwriters or writers that help. So, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy out there. You doubt Kendrick has ghostwriters? I believe it. Uh, that's a lie. Kendrick don't have writers. Let's be accurate, gang. No, I think he does. In fact, I don't think he's... Pr- I, I bet Kendrick's best shit, somebody else. And I bet Drake knows that. And I bet that's going to be... That's going to be coming soon. I bet Kendrick is not who you think he is. And I bet Drake knows. That's what I think. Oh, all the Kendrick fans are so upset. Oh. The N95 reference track leaked may not be a secret anymore. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I bet everybody has some kind of ghostwriter slash helpful input. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'd probably agree with that. What's your take on ghouls? You mean from Fallout? Uh, Josh, I recommended checking out Lex Friedman's podcast with Andrew uh, Callahan. It's pretty interesting. Diamond Lounge vibes for sure. Yeah, I'll check that out. I think I saw you mention that on the um, uh, Discord. So I'll check that out for sure. Rossi says, James Gunn ghostwrites for unity. Word in the streets. Oh, Jesus. Uh, all five Kendricks uh, fans copping hard. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, Sydney Sweeney. Co-star Den of Nerds. Uh, what? Say what? Uh, little green ghouls. What are you guys talking about? Josh, clip the Hulk, Hulk smash and play it from the beginning of the stream to smash like promoting. Mm. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what that looks like. I haven't really looked at it yet, but. The N95 thing was fake? No, the thing that came out that said it was fake was fake, actually. So it was a double fake out. Basically. Yeah. So it was fake. fake. It was a fake fake. And that's 100% real. Josh's hip hop opinions are as bad as his Andor takes. Dude, I bet you don't even like Andor, Ella Funk. Just be honest with me. Did you even watch Andor? How's the Coke taste? Like failure? God damn it. A little bit, actually. You know. Have some respect for the culture? I do. I have a lot of respect for the culture. Anytime I hear ghouls, I think of green ghouls from Always Sunny. I don't remember that one. That is that something that like Char- one of those weird beliefs that like Charlie had or something like that? Two fakes don't make a right, but three lefts do. Exactly. Yeah, so I guess um when is academics going on the Joe Button podcast? That's happening pretty soon. Is that happening today? Because I think that's when uh, Kendrick is going to drop this song that he's been working on for four years. Is it today? Wow. So apparently Kendrick has been working on a song about Drake for four years. Which if you look at his discography, it makes about that's about his timetable. You know what I mean? That's about how long it takes him to get creative and actually put something out. So it, it tracks. It makes sense. But that is also incredible. That is some pettiness on another level. That's awesome. Yeah. 
So we'll see. I mean, how nasty could it be, though? I mean, Pusha already... Like, what can you really do to Drake? I don't really understand. And I'm excited to see how Drake clapped back because he said, uh, don't wake the demon up. And I think the truth is, Drake is banging everybody's girl or their ex-girl and pillow talk. I think he knows everything. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Drake already had a second track waiting for Kendrick. That was AI. The Whit the Whitney thing. That was AI. Drake is battle tested. I mean, he literally died. Like he died in the in the push up thing. I don't, know. I don't know what they're going to do. We'll see. Is this real beef or just manufactured? I think it's real. I think that's probably why J. Cole dipped out. Because I think Cole was like... Thinking it was... You know, for the... Scene. And then maybe he... Realized what it was going to become... And, you know, Cole's probably got some skeletons. Cole's probably got some things he would rather not. And so I think Cole was like... <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't think it's gotten to a crazy level yet, but I think Kendrick's about to take it there. And technically, Ross, like... uh Rick Ross is taking it there, but I mean, like, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think anybody really gives a fuck. Maybe I'm wrong. Like, I think Rick Ross is so obviously like, I don't know, bro. Like, you literally, all of your hits are because of Drake. I don't know if I can't remember if it was Rick Ross or if it was Wayne in one of those old songs where they were like, and uh, as long as it's something like as long as we have Drizzy on every chorus, we gonna be all right or something like that. And that's like what it was for a while. That's what it was. Crazy. So like I if you're I don't know how you can actually like do that with your if you're really rick ross you're really going like really bro really i don't know i do like that one song the two what's that one called where he's in the two-seater but that's drake too isn't drake on that too it was wayne that said that Where does Wayne sit in all of this? Because I heard Birdman is going to side with Drake. People love Canadians. Oh, really? Is that what it is? Yo, peace out, Dr. Hood. Appreciate you, bro. Wayne's retired. Didn't I just hear something from him? Like within the last six months, I just heard something and I was like, damn, dude, you still got it. Ross and Birdman have beef history. Oh, I didn't know that. And we gonna be all right if we get Drake on every hook. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. So Wheezy's just gonna sit this one out. So if Drake is Thanos. If Drake is Thanos, who is Wheezy? The Watcher?
Galactus, maybe. Drake is Kang? Ugh. No. The Ancient One? Yo, who's uh, Allure's, right? That's Drake's, uh, or Thanos' dad? Wheezy would be Kang, if anything. I thought Diddy was the watcher. No, Diddy. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. There is no Drake without Wheezy. Yeah, I agree. I believe that. I believe that. Meg the Stallion is Meg the Stallion and She-Hulk. I see what you did there. Uh, Diddy is going to the raft. Yeah, no, I think that's probably accurate as well. Why is this just a glaze stream now? Am I glazing? Am I glazing? Is it OVO over here? Drake, where's my owl chain, man? I'm holding it down in the nerdy community. Look at this thing I made. Where's my fucking chain? I love Drake, but damn. All right, all right, we can move on. All right, what else, guys? Should I just get out of here and rethink my life? I think I might have to just get out of here. And also, something just occurred to me that's really interesting. I think we need somebody to get an AI Drake song that talks about them as if they all are actually Marvel characters. That would be kind of lit. Because the AI Drake is pretty good. AI Drake can go pretty hard. One more box before you go. I mean, why? I mean, why? What happened to the longer streams? Well, look, man, I, I'll be honest with you. It kind of fucked me up. Like the whole, like this thing, this, I did not expect this shit to happen. I thought there was like a 1% chance. You know what I mean? It's like it's not like it's super short. We went over two hours. We're all, we're we're getting to uh, two and a half hours here. So uh, that Star Wars game thing you said at the beginning, the Star Wars game thing you said at the beginning. What do you mean? Like the Fallout? Okay, yeah. Let's talk a little Fallout. Let's talk a little Fallout. So uh, I finished up the Fallout series. I think I finished it up last night. Um, uh, yeah, watched like a couple here, a couple there, binged pretty hard like Friday night into Saturday and then finished it off on Sunday. I loved it. I thought the Fallout series was incredible. I didn't, I'm not like a super big Fallout person. I think I played a little bit of Fallout 4, um, never played New Vegas, never played Fallout 76, but I had a buddy that was really into Fallout 76 when it dropped. So I'm familiar with Fallout, not super familiar with it. So that's kind of where I'm at as a fan. And going into the show, I thought it was fantastic. I feel like it takes the idea from the game where you're a vault dweller and you're kind of exploring. And there was a sense of, um, and I remember this a lot from the games, you, you come upon somebody in the world of Fallout and you're just really not sure. Is this a person I can trust or not? Some people you could trust and would become an ally that then maybe would do something later on in the game. Some people would do that and then cross you. Uh, a lot of people you couldn't trust and they were trying to do something bad to you. So I feel from the perspective of the vault dweller being in the world, 
The world is new to them because they were in the vault. The idea of who can I trust, who can I not trust, I feel like that's very, like it has the spirit of Fallout. It, it conveys what Fallout is in a good way. And on top of that, it's just it's just clean. Like the writing's good. Really layered narrative, especially with the ghoul character, his connections to what started everything. Massive reveal there. Which, by the way, I'm curious, is that in the games at all? Where it's, I, I mean, it's it's a pretty big spoiler, but I guess I'll just say it. I don't want to spoil it, but I'll say the thing they find out about his wife at the very end of the show, is that in the games at all? I'm just curious. Let me know, Chad. It's not? Okay. Because I was going to say, that's wild. Like, that was pretty wild. Um, so that aspect of it was cool. I liked Maximus as a character. I felt like that was a very interesting uh, story, especially in the little mini arc where he's in the vault and for the first time experiencing what some of that can be, you know? Like, what the lavish life of vault dwellers is. Very violent Super fun. Like, I would just describe it as a very fun show, even if you're not familiar uh, with Fallout. And then again, like Goggins and the way that his story is so layered and where it leaves off at the end was incredibly interesting. I, I like the power armor. I had a little, I gotta bring, I gotta bring Warhammer into it. Gotta bring Warhammer into it. The Warhammer or the uh, power suits and how the power suits are there with the normal humans gave me a little bit of hope of maybe Space Marines and how we could see some of that in live action because it scales well. It looked really cool. So overall, a lot of stuff that I like about Fallout, but I also kind of hate Fallout because of the Halo show. I look online and I see some Fallout fans bringing up like small discrepancies in the lore or complaining about, you know, some things in it. And look, again, I'm not a super hardcore Fallout fan. I don't know all of that shit. Maybe there's a point to some of these complaints. But all I can tell you is as a Halo fan, when I see a Fallout fan being like, pedantic about a few things they got wrong i feel like going down to the fish market grabbing a several pound salmon and then slapping them across the face with it repeatedly because holy shit you guys it's an embarrassment of riches the show's fucking phenomenal and more people are playing fallout than ever i've seen the charts i lurked and found the reddit posts about it more people than ever are gonna go explore the games and your games haven't fucking fallen off either although i guess 76 did have a really rough go of it but my point is like dude enjoy what you have be happy that you have this show it is so much better than what halo fans have to deal with halo fans have a show that has nothing to do with halo it's halo in name only and maybe a few little things they get right and halo infinite which was supposed to be a 10 year long live service game is already abandoned by the devs they're already working on the next one and halo continues to just be totally stupid as fuck so it's it was it's I like Fallout. I thought it was great. It also kind of made me hate Fallout fans. Um, and also, dude, what is going on with Halo? They need to look at what Fallout did, and they need they need to understand that like that's what they need to do. So you need people. You need to bring back people that did story in older games. You need to have somebody that is going to craft an actual live action thing. I don't know how the season two thing is. And I know Rob was in here on Friday trying to tell us that uh, uh, season two of Halo was really, really good. I'm sorry. It's way too late for me. And I can't support the creation that was the show, even though they're trying to do a facelift and make it a little bit more like Halo. It's, it's too late. Like, I cannot support the show regardless. I would support a reboot. If you want to reboot it, you want to build it from scratch, and you want to make it feel actually like Halo, I'd be down. I am I would give that a fair shot. Um, but the Halo show and Paramount, I mean, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but do you guys remember they were literally uh, using the copyright system to try to silence critics like uh, Angry Joe? So, I mean... That show, that whole group of people, and I know maybe they got a new showrunner, but it's still the same stink. Like, you didn't wipe it off. You didn't wash it off. It still stinks, and I want nothing to do 
with the Halo show. I, frankly, like even though Infinite is a really tight like gameplay loop, like it's very good. I don't want anything to do with Halo Infinite. Like they have they have screwed the pooch on that too. So it's a shame because uh, you know Bethesda traditionally very uh, well. I guess now very Xbox heavy, right? Big Xbox brand exclusivity. And Halo is that. I mean, Halo was the original Xbox exclusive. We've had moments in time where Peter Jackson was going to make Halo. Um, who was the guy that did uh, Chappie and uh, freaking uh, District 9? Neil Blumkamp. He did some Halo shorts. Oh, they're incredible. Um, so Halo in live action has always almost been there. Never quite gotten it right. And... Uh, when I look at Fallout, I'm like, damn, that's what it should be. So maybe this could be the birth of uh, a new era for the video game stuff. We talk about it a lot, but, you know, Last of Us, Super Mario Bros., maybe this uh, coming, um, well, Sonic too, but maybe this coming uh, live action Zelda thing. If you have the people that are there, like, involved, and it's made by people that love it, I think it's just going to be way better, so... Hopefully they uh, could create something new, man, because damn, if I could experience a show even 70% as good as Fallout for Halo, I would be a very, very happy fan. So yeah, a little bit of a mixed feeling on that one, but but I did really enjoy that show. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? Did you guys watch it? Did y'all check that out? The worst mistake Microsoft made was selling the rights to the TV show to Showtime. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, so then show, who does Showtime hire to make it? Right? Halo Forward Unto Dawn was a low budget but fair. Had to come back for gaming chat. Boom, there you go. Yeah, and that was not bad. That was all done in the lead up to Infinite or in the lead up to Reach, I think. Um, that stuff wasn't bad. It just never like really gets there. Should have been a week to week and not a binge. That's an interesting one. Yeah. No, I think the binge question is also fair because this, unless I'm mistaken, is this the first time Amazon has done this where they do all of the episodes at once? Has Amazon ever done that before, chat? And there's a lot of debate about this. You know, um, does do certain shows get hurt by not having a binge and not having it all go, right? Oh, they do both? Okay. Um, certain shows get hurt by not having a binge. Certain shows are better with a binge. And then the question is always like, okay, but if you do a binge, you lose out on some conversation. And I think what that really means is you lose out on a week to week conversation, right? Cuz you still get cuz I I don't know. Like I don't know how the conversations have been for uh Fallout specifically. But if you look at something like uh Stranger Things, Stranger Things despite all coming out at once and I guess the last season didn't do that. Now that I'm thinking about it, the last season came out in two chunks, didn't it? That was pretty useful for creating some buzz. Yeah, maybe there's a happy medium. Maybe it's like three and then three and then three, you know? Um, I really like a binge, though. I really enjoy a binge. But I do think it's fair to point out that for the sake of the show and for, you know, wanting other seasons and wanting it to be successful, yeah, maybe a binge isn't the move. But then again, if you think about the way that, like, if you want headlines, right? And so one of the problems with the shows that come out week to week, and especially with the Disney Plus shows, they're not charting because there's not an influx of people watching and you know that season and the previous seasons. So by making Fallout come at all out at once, you technically could probably chart on Nielsen or Samba or Parrot Analytical or whatever. You could probably chart easier, and then you grab up some headlines of, like, number one over the weekend overall or whatever you end up grabbing, right? So I wonder if that's a bit of it, too, and that's why they want to do it. So 
It's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one when it comes to that. But I am curious if if people feel like that's hurting the show or helping the show. I'm not really sure. Again, I really enjoyed that binge, and we did watch it over like three or four days. How many of you guys are actually watching it, or did you start it and you're still watching it? Like, what do you think? What do you think? Because that is a tricky part of it. But again, I I, I don't know because I really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed the binge too. Still watching it? Started it? Okay. Still watching? Yeah. I watched it in two days? Damn. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's the beauty. You have the ability to choose when to binge. Watched two after shifts uh, for four days. No biggie. No brain power. Just enjoyed. Yeah. I like a binge, man. It's more enjoyable as a binge than it should have just been a movie. What? No. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that because I think the structure is different. Movies aren't really supposed to be like that. You know? But a structure of an episode is it's it, it's in the it's in the word. It's a uh, episodic Adam. You see? Episode episodic that's how that works. So you you want to get to the next piece. And then the next piece wants you to get to the next piece. See? That's why you come to the Den of Nerds, baby. That's why you come to the Den of Nerds, baby. We can educate you. Oh, shit, really? I have no idea. I should work in TV or something. Yeah, you should. And you should also buy some of this Coke off of me. This is Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm. That and Rage Coke. Yes. Yes, that is true. Drive to Philly and I will. I might have to. Yeah. Alex over on Twitch says, uh, hey, Josh, uh, quick question. What do you think of Jake Gyllenhaal saying he would love to play Batman in the DCU? I think he would be good. What do you guys think? I would like Gyllenhaal as Batman. I think it would be very cool. The feds have entered the chat? Yeah, a little bit, huh? Maybe. Maybe. <sighs> he fell off slightly acting-wise. You know, he was really weird in uh Roadhouse. And like we like Elisa and I both commented on that. We were watching it. Part of me thinks he had to do that for the sake of the movie. Like the movie was weird. Like, the whole thing had this really weird vibe. So, yeah, I don't know, bro. Used to watch everything Jake in. Now it's just whatever. Yeah, that's fair. I bet that's fair, yeah. Uh, Thanks for taking my question, bro. Would send a super chat, but it's not letting me for some reason. No worries, man. I got to figure out what the deal is with the Twitch so I can be able to watch better on there and everything, so. No worries. He was great in Nightcrawler. Dude, he's so good in Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is incredible. Source code was dope. I've never seen it. Is it pretty good? I loved Roadhouse, LMAO. Jake played the most indefinite character. Yeah, he was quite strange, you know? Yeah. Uh, It was so good. Binged it in two days. Which one? Fallout? Source code is great. Oh, yeah? What's it about? What's it about over there? What's it about? Donnie Darko is great for sure. It's about source codes. Oh, you know what else, too? Guys, before we get out of here, um, we need more subscribers. Okay? Here's the thing. We got like 217,000 subscribers on the main channel. And Adam's like, we should do, you should just stream on the main channel since you're a streamer now. And that would technically, like, he's technically right. But if we get like 50,000 more subscribers this year, if we get up to 100K, he's not as right. So we need more subscribers on the Den of Nerds Live. I got to figure something out. We got to make it fun. But I want to do something where, like, if we get 100K this year, we'll do something crazy. 
So so how would that work? What should we do? Uh, put out that that you're selling Coke. That'll boost numbers. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Buy more Cokes. That'll help. Mm, awesome. Real creative, Jen. Uh, street teams. You DM me. Street teams, Mike? Street teams, buddy? Really? Uh, it would reset every Nerdvenger badge moving to the main channel. Yes, that's true. And I said that to Adam. And he said, fuck them. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm just telling you, like, I, I care, you know, but Adam doesn't, uh, I think this channel should be rebranded to the den of nerds. So you can change the original to a unity one or something. What? That's a wild take, man. Send, spend $500 on Sprite. Jesus. Uh, we know in our hearts how long we've been here. See? That's a good attitude, Justin. So we're going to shut this thing down. I'll see you guys on the main channel on Wednesday. Also, isn't it crazy? We get o we're over 1.1K watching on Twitch right now. That's crazy. YouTube needs to up their game, bro. Although I think a part of the reason that our numbers go down on YouTube is because there, there was a good bit of people that would come to the streams via Twitter. And I think a lot of them are just watching on Twitter now, which is weird. It's weird. You know what I'm saying? Super weird. Super weird. Uh, we better here. Over on Twitchy? Maybe. I like, or, uh, yeah, Twitch. I like Twitch. Make an intro video for the main channel telling them that you are a streamer now and to sub to the live profile. Yeah, something like that. We'll do something like that. For sure. For sure. For sure. We'll do something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to get on out of here and think about what to do with these Cokes. Yeah, go home and rethink your life. 100%, dude. Open one more. Okay, I'll open one more. One of the ones that I damaged. And that's that's your fault too, guys. Like, you guys pushed me too far. Oh, fuck, bro. No, that... Literally one of the cans is broken. Who said one more? Who said one more? Who was it? Well, that's going to do it for today's stream. Appreciate you guys. Much love. I got Coke all over my goddamn floor. And all over there.
Is everybody gone? Did everybody leave, 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 leave? My God. My God. I still can't believe it. Like, people were telling me, I, dude, people were telling me, and I, I was like telling Elisa and shit. I was like, yo. Like, look at those, and no. I, I was like, there's no way they would do that. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? Anyway. We live, we learn, and we Nerdvenge. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Sorry I got a little spicy. I was calling all the Warhammer fans dumb. That's probably not the best move. I should be a little more chill. I was just riled up. You know? I was just riled up. So don't take it personally. <sighs> okay. Open up your third eye and wash out your stinky butt. Hey!